a podcast to honor the gods. This better come with a sacrifice. Deus Ex Media. I wonder if there's a Canadian girl doll. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my god. Is there? There should be. After this, we're starting the episode. Yeah. <laughs> Dina's like, please. <laughs> um, there is. Oh my god. What does she look like? Is she in like red and white? Or is she just does she just look like a girl? They're called Maple Lee. Maple Lee? <laughs> this is weird. Um All right, I'm that's, gonna yeah. Are you sure you're not on a porn site? <laughs> This was the first hit when I googled Canadian American girl. Though. Do not, do I know these? Oh my god! Oh, it's these bitches. Yeah, these are in our. <laughs> I know, I know, I know these bitches. Yeah, I've seen them around town before. Their faces look weird. They are. In they're Canada. haunting. It, there's something like slightly <laughs> off about the faces. I think it's that they're smiling more than our dolls. Do. We're happy they're like, here. They're like, hey. <laughs> Healthcare. <laughs> that's the smile that's the face of somebody with healthcare tag yourself I'm Salia Sa- 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 oh no I can't be her she's indigenous I think I'm Charles C's Charles, Charles C, C? <laughs> okay I think I'm Brian. oh my god oh yeah, my god I'm Tina you would love Charles C yeah with this like surfer outfit I'm, what is that name, Charles? You like what? Yeah. Mary Clay, you're a total Terran. Outerwear, dance. Oh my god, am I? God. Although she does appear to be hiking, I take it back. <laughs> They're all kind of out in the world doing hiking. That, yeah, that does, no. That does the maple. Oh, ooh, Alexi. I, I imagine that's all you can do in Canada. Wait, Alexi is kind <laughs> of like a city girl. Yeah. Okay, wait. This is a rabbit hole. I'm. I'll t- yeah, let's I'm, start the no, episode. I'm actually I I'm Leone, who is just in a box. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's not even in a city. Leone Wait, like doesn't have one of these like backdrop things. Le- Leone. Yeah, she- Leone, she's just in a box. <laughs> Leone, she's Quebecois. I see a backdrop. She looks like she has she's one in backdrop Aust- picture. She's in Quebec. What are their stories? Okay, I was go- I was saying Austria, but oh, wait, no. I'll, okay, I'll, we need to do yeah. the episode, but yeah. I will fully be. The French Canadian Oh, she one. has a twin sister. Leonie is Oh, wait, no, so she cute. has Leonie. twin sisters. Leonie. We don't have these crazy Leonie. names down here. <laughs> okay, it looks like she plays hockey. That's hockey. That's not me. You could. Okay, let's see. Alexi, what's her story? Oh, she does gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> what about Charles? Who I don't know anyone named Charles. This is so great. Where is she Who's from? Who's Brianne? Oh, she comes. She's in Salt Spring Island. That's just across the street from me. Oh, British. Oh, Columbia. Brianne does ballet. Okay, where are these bitches who are like writers? Where, where's the one who's like, I am a gremlin, and I, yeah, no, I don't heart the kid. They're all too active. Yeah, well, that's Canada. Maybe I don't know. I've never <laughs> been there. Wait, you've never even not not none at all. No, I've never I've never been to Canada. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. You never towed over the 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 border, the Great Northern. No, border? No, I haven't. But I want to. You could just run across. No one will stop you. <laughs> yeah, I'll meet in the woods. Oh hell yeah! Let's fucking start. Yeah. <laughs> Let's fucking start okay. the episode. <laughs> Welcome to the Restricted Section, the podcast that taught us to get over Harry Potter by diving straight into Harry Potter. If you haven't done the reading, don't worry, we did it for you. Here's what we're talking about this week. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Chapter 5, Fallen Warrior, in which we wait for our husbands to come home from war, basically. (laughs) I'm your host, Christina. My co-host today is Mary Clay. Say hello to the listeners, Mary Clay. Hello, everyone. What up? I always up? think Christina's going to open the episode by being like, if you didn't do the reading, don't worry. We didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> one day. One day I won't. And 
Our special guest today is a dear friend of the pod, Adele. Say hello to the listeners, Adele. Hello, listeners from the far, rocky, snowy regions of Canada, where we have Canadian girl dolls instead of American girl dolls. (laughs) Shocking. You probably remember Adele from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Chapter 9, Grim Defeat Part 1, back in fucking... February 2021, Adele, you are also on for uh, chapter 31 of the Goblet of Fire, the third task. Oh, my God. That was a time. You've also (laughs) been on for uh, the Owls chapter of Order of the Phoenix, March 2023. You know, it's good to just do a little roll call since uh, this is the last book, you know? It's like looking back through the ages. And then your last appearance on the show was... Uh, October of last year with Charlie and Ethan. Oh, it's all coming back to me yeah. now, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that chaos room of, of the three that of us. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, the Unbreakable Vow, which yeah. is such a good fucking chapter. It was stellar. That was a crazy episode, but I had a great time. How have you been since then? Pretty good. You know, love and life, not reading Harry Potter, reading lots of other books. When people come on here and they're like, I don't read Harry Potter except this. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to you, Adele. <laughs> I mean, I don't have the books here, so they're not here at my apartment. Um, so I just pirate them every time I need to read them for, the, for this podcast. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it's the least you yeah, can do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the last like Harry Potter media I consumed was... Um, Oh, just for shits and giggles, I decided to play, like, a Harry Potter game that I had thrifted that was, like, a DVD game. Ooh, nice. How was that? Um, terrible. It's a terrible game. (laughs) Oh, man. Was it for one of the movies? No, it's, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's, like, you do challenges with your TV remote. (laughs) Interesting. It's, like, a Wii, but for your TV. Yeah, I'll send it to you. And it came out before the fourth movie. And so, like, there's scenes from the fourth movie. (laughs) And I was Whoa. just, like, drunk by myself and found it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to play this. <laughs> that's so fun. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good time. I definitely want to hear more about that. I will. It, okay. Potential bonus episode of this game. I'll ship it to you so you can play it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm dead serious about, it, about that. Well, so she's it. trying Send to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's cursed. She yeah. She's trying to get it off her hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thrilled to be here. Before we get started, we have a, an email from a listener, but hold on, they sent a correction, so I need to correct the correction, <laughs> or, or I'm going to read it that way. <laughs> Diego, he, him, wrote us an email. Thank you so much, Diego. Uh, Diego says, hello, I'm currently listening through to the pod, midway through book four at this point, so we'll see you someday, Diego, <laughs> but... <laughs> I I had a theory and figured what the hey I'll say if, I'll see if they think it's interesting and catch up to it at some point. Anyways, my idea centers around the questions you had about how do the we- how the Weasley boys keep up with Quidditch. If they don't have TV, what do they do to watch their teams? My theory is that people pass around Omni Ocular the things from the Quidditch World Cup, recordings of games like Grateful Dead tapes back in the day. There would be whole sections of people recording because that's supposed to be the best angles for viewing or specific people whose recordings would be viewed as better. I actually think this is a fun idea to think about. Plus, it actually works as a canon way for Ron to actually watch Quidditch on a regular basis. I hope you thought this was fun, too. Thank you so much, Diego. I will also say that in the original email, Diego said um, Evil Dead instead of Grateful Dead tapes. <laughs> and I love that so much uh, because I'm a big Evil Dead fan <laughs> and a small to medium Grateful Dead fan. Um, what do you all think of this? The omniocular theory. I like it. I just assumed that they used the radio because there's a radio, like a wizarding oh. radio in this book. How boring to listen to quidditch on radio people used to listen to baseball yeah. on the radio you're, i know you're right and they went, that's nice. not, i mean so there's boring. not wizarding television though so yeah they, I, I just assume the radio because there's a radio in this book mm, there is but that's so boring i think that in terms of magicking it this is the best i've heard so far yeah the omniocular theory yeah, yeah. 
Oh. Maybe maybe they could use the omniculars and then like project it. Like a projector. Yeah, like those projectors that are like the sunset projectors that are always advertised on Instagram. Oh, cool. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, so I was thinking like a film projector. Like oh. I use in my backyard. No, yours is much better because you get those three dimensions. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, That's that would cool. be kind of cool. Like recordings. I mean, it's still not great, but I always just assume because it's live. When like the game is live, it would literally just be like old timey baseball and how people just list- like used to listen to the oh, radio. I can't imagine. Telling them. What was happening on the baseball pitch? Yeah, I do really like this new idea yes. that there's the little 3D light thing. I like this just buy. I like that so much. Yeah, that would be not very convenient, but fun. You can be a fan of a of a sport or like a tournament or something that's happening without watching it. Like the women's worlds are on right now for hockey. Oh my god, that was Canadian. Um, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> the hockey's on, um, but it's like behind a paywall, so I'm not watching it. But I'm just following all the updates on Twitter. But I'm I still feel very passionate about it. Okay. And I okay. see little That's highlight some, reels. Some important content. Yeah. So you know you can you can follow it. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks again for the email, Diego. Thank uh, you, Diego. You- you like Diego can have your email read on the podcast, restricted section pod at gmail.com. Send us anything. It can even be from literally two seasons ago, and I'll just read it because I like reading our listener emails. And we'll be like, wow, why did we say that? Yeah. We sound dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, us looking back to where Diego is, we're like, we sound dumb, but Diego has to look forward in the future. Hopefully we're we smart. Diego is really the one suffering. He's <laughs> listening to so many hours of us. If you, if you start at, back at season one, you're the one in the trenches. <laughs> Honestly. So let's dive into chapter five, The Fallen Warrior. Adele, you picked this chapter. Why? <laughs> I picked this chapter because I wanted anything that had uh, Andromeda Tonks in it. Mm, or Bellatrix okay. Lestrange. Um, okay. But then I f- figured that the Bellatrix chapters were going to be kind of, um, what's the word, popular. Like, I, especially, mm. you know, when she dies. And I wanted anything that kind of talks about the Black Sisters. Um, cool. I, uh, yeah. I, yeah. So that's why I picked. I, at one point, I had this like hyper fixation where I was making like TikTok edits of the Black Sisters during like the height of COVID. Um, and I read a lot of like fanfic cool. and lore. Yeah, <laughs> and f- I mean, the, fan it's art. an extremely interesting relationship. Definitely, we've talked a lot about. I think especially like Narcissa, mm-hmm. but definitely Bellatrix too. The book just talks about her more um, in like previous episodes, and definitely uh, our upcoming Draco Malfoy character study bonus episode Ooh. over on the Patreon. But yeah, they're a very interesting dynamic. So okay, I'm excited to get into it. Yeah. Before we do, Adele, this is your first time coming on for Deathly Hallows. How do you like this book compared to the other books in the series? Ooh, um, my favorite books are never the the last books or like the finales of anything like Return of the King or um, mm. The Last Battle or, you know, Deathly Hallows. Like when I just go back to reread or when I used to go back to reread like a Harry Potter, it was never this one. Um, yeah. And the, the camping really like gets me for this book um harry has a lot of feelings of he just has a lot of big feelings in this book he has a lot of feelings Um, yeah he has a lot of feelings and also it's just so i don't know there's something about the the final books in so in just so much of literature that i just that's like that's not my comfort reading right so i rarely come back to it so i think i've only read this one uh a handful of times versus let's say like books literally books one to six or the same thing with the movie like when i'm like oh i want to watch harry potter i won't just sit down and watch like part one or part two especially part two i i agree with that that's really it it it's very hard for me to jump into Mm -hmm. this level of intensity and like only get like the resolution to all these plot lines like none of like the fun tension and storytelling and it, it really is just like it's just like a different kind of story it's like mm-hmm. a wrapping up story mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. exactly a many endings of return of the king <laughs> yeah type let's end it <laughs> yeah when i sit down to watch Lord of the rings it's number two and i sit down to watch harry potter it's like one of the i don't know like one of the fun ones 
Uh, yeah, usually one through four for me. On yeah, the although Harry six, six is fun. Six is pretty fun. Yeah. I always forget about it, though, because it still is just, like, a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, but seven, seven is interesting. I So this is the only Harry Potter book that I remember coming out. Um, for some reason, I was, like, visiting. I was actually somewhere in the States. I think New Hampshire or something like that with my parents. And I remember this book coming out. It's one of, like, a very fuzzy memory, because I feel like it was, what, 2000 and seven it was 2007 yeah yeah so i was seven so i was like but i do remember like all the hype around here like like just like the general public excitement about it and i hadn't been reading the series at that time and i remember seeing it in like book bookshops in the states being like oh like like everyone's talking about the new harry potter book so mm-hmm. that was like my first i think memory of just harry potter in general before i actually started reading it Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter five, Fallen Warrior. We just, the end, of, if, you got to start with the last chapter. Yeah. Harry has just crash landed in a pond at the Tonks's house. Yeah. Not at Tonks's house, at the, the, the Tonks's. Tonks's house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hagrid is unconscious, and then on Andromeda Tonks comes out to get him. This is Tonks's mommy. Yes. Um, And she's cool. She's very cool. Yeah. She, like we said earlier, is the sister of Bellatrix and Narcissa. And, like, what happened? What happened different? Oh, yeah. Like, what was the deal with, like, their different? Because they were ra- theoretically raised in the same household. So, like, how did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's she, the middle child. Ted. The middle child. Because Ted Tonks is a uh, muggle born or Correct. something? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is. So yeah. maybe that's what happened. Maybe like when they started going to school, she like befriended Muggleborns and was like, "Wait a minute, I don't," you know. I mean, like a lot how a lot of people do, or when they expand their mm-hmm. world and mm-hmm. meet people in those worldviews, they're like, "Wait a minute, why have I been raised to think that like you're less than me?" So mm-hmm. I imagine it's that. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it was because she married, uh, or she like ran off with Ted Tonks. Um, There's a line that Sirius says about it in book five when they're talking about the tapestry and Mm -hmm. when uh, Sirius is talking all about the black family tree, et cetera, et cetera, Mm -hmm. um, and how Andromeda is burned off. And when he's like, oh, Tonks is like my cousin. So Bellatrix and her family, the rest of the blacks, like never forgave her for running off with a muggle-born. Well, it's pretty par for the course when it comes to that fucking family. Yeah. So... I've always just wondered about these sisters, like, if they were friends and if they miss each other and if, like, if Bella, Trix, and Narcissa have, like, a good relationship and if they don't, if they're, like, if they are missing Andromeda, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we got a lot of clues to Bella, Trix, and Narcissa's relationship in that chapter from book six, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And also a little bit more... I think there's a scene in the Malfoy Manor later in this book where they're both together and it's, yeah, there's some, um, like, Bellatrix is taking charge and Narcissa's like, this is my house kind of thing. Um, yeah. Older sister, younger sister, but Andromeda was the middle child. I've read a lot of fanfic speculating about, like, what the relationship would have been like. Like, they all yeah. have their nicknames, uh, like Bella, Sissy, and, and um, Andy for Andromeda. You gotta have a nickname if your name's Andromeda. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think if, like, the name has any meaning to... If it can give us to any clues about her relationship with the family, right? Like, someone who was chained by her family, meant to be, like, a sacrifice or whatever, and then is, like, freed by a hero. I don't know, just, like... Is some... that who Andromeda was in mythology? Yeah, yeah. So Andromeda oh, that's was... one I don't know. Yeah, Andromeda um, is a constellation, and also she's the princess who yeah. Perseus... Slay is from the sea monster. Okay. I think it's Perseus. But yeah, Mm -hmm. her father chains her up to appease, like, the Kraken. Okay, perfect. And then, uh, because it's like, you know, the Kraken needs, like, a human sacrifice or whatever. And then she's freed. So, I mean, maybe the idea that Ted Tonks is kind of freeing her from, like, (laughs) like this essential, like, pure blood cult, right? But It's uh, true. He literally is. Yeah, I don't know. I find the the Black Sisters really, really intriguing. And that's in part just be, like there's a there's a section of the fandom that's just like in love with them. 
and has like mm-hmm. written amazing fanfic, like a uh, produce amazing fan art. I don't know, like like that quality is very much up to the like kind of the Marauders era quality. Yeah, uh, almost like it's like very like there's a lot of fans who are really interested in it. So cool. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I think it's interesting. Like you said, we do get to see Narcissa and Bellatrix interact. But, like, it's always in, like, really intense, like, heightened mm-hmm. yeah. dramatic scenes. And, like, I do feel like they still are, like, I feel like they're very, it's, like, kind of, like, the way that sisters maybe would normally talk to each other. But with this veil of, like, fascist suppression, like, over yeah. it. Because it's, like, they're just, like, bickering back and forth a lot of the time. And so I do wonder if they're just, like, kind of always, like, really familiar and like comfortable and like go back and forth like that because they're sisters. But or or if they like their relationship really only has come down to like being death eaters, you know? Yeah, I mean there especially what we know about Narcissa, like she's a fat like all three of the black sisters are fascinating to me, but what we know of Narcissa and how she's got like She's got, like, she both feet are fully into this cult, but, like, maybe, like, one inch behind. Like, she's got ever so slight reservations, and that's mostly just because she's driven by family, mm-hmm. whereas Bellatrix is completely different. Not to, like, yes. talk about the cursed child, which I don't consider uh. canon, right? But, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then Andromeda's the, like, the one who got away kind of thing from the cult. Interesting. Yeah, and Tonks has that one line in this chapter where she says uh, Bellatrix wants to, like, they ran into Bellatrix and Rodolphus, her husband, and she's like, Bellatrix wants to kill me almost as much as she wants to kill Harry. Mm-hmm. Just, and, like, I'm like, that's her niece just because of, like, how Bellatrix feels about Andromeda running off and marrying a Muggleborn yeah, and, like, leaving their damn. family. She's like, yeah, I'll kill her niece. And I know we don't really know who ends up killing Tonks and Lupin, but... Yeah. <gasps> Spoilers! No, it's... Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, well, here's Andromeda. <laughs> she For all five out. seconds that we see her. <laughs> I know, this is... we. I think we hear about them more, like, way more than we... And we only see them right now when, like, they don't get a ton of characterization. They're just, like, doing business. Yeah. Andromeda and her husband, Ted. But they do name their kid Teddy. So that's cool. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. yeah, a moment of silence because we know. So, we know eventually that Ted Tonks is forced to go on the run because we mentioned radios earlier. Yeah, and there's oh, that yeah. Epi- well, yeah, so that radio episode. He is he speaks. I think it's like Dean Thomas on the radio, and they hear it later. Dean, it's like so complicated. Dean Thomas, I think, is like outside of their tent and then listening in. That oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, but so, so th- he's he's on the radio somehow. The Muggleborn, mm-hmm. like, or no, maybe Ted yeah. is outside their tent. Well, Dean runs into. I remember Dean runs into some other people, and that's how and yeah, like, they start some... talking, and then they listen in on the oh, radio. Is yeah. it? It's both of them then. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, when you get there, rem- yeah, you'll you'll know. <laughs> but, like when you get there eventually. But yeah, God damn it! There's so much. Shit. I actually do kind of like that part. Not that we're anywhere near there yet, but I kind of, they skipped that in the movies, and I, I kind of like that part. Like, how do yeah. we get our news now? Oh, we figured it out. Yeah, oh. Oh, but it's, like, underground radio. But yeah, um, I totally well. forgot all about that chapter. Christina, if I'm not already on, can you shift things around? Can I come on for that one? <laughs> it's a good chapter. It's, like, Let's the Muggleborn resistance, <laughs> um, like, underground radio. It's, like, pirate radio, almost. It's probably like, a really fucking boring chapter other than that. Because, like, I, so I did radio in college, and, like, I can 100% see, and obviously, like, we all do podcasting now, (laughs) nerds. Um, (laughs) Fucking nerds. uh, And so, like, I can totally see, like, running, like, an underground resistance radio being, like, my job in the revolution, you know? Like, that's such a, like, like, world building aspect. Yeah, that's why it always stuck out to me because I was like, oh, Ted Tonks, we know who he is. I don't know if Andromeda is ever mentioned again, though, really. Maybe at the end, maybe at the final battle. Yeah, I think there's some brief mentions where they say like, oh, Teddy is with Tonks's mom. Oh, yeah. After after the baby has been born. And they're just like, yeah, we left the baby with the mom to come fight the grandma. Yeah, mm-hmm. it'll be fine. It'll all be fine. 
That's in the chapter called The Deathly Hallows. <gasps> You're kidding. What a terribly Allegedly. named chapter. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> well, she was never great at naming her chapters. The, okay, when this this one's called The Fallen Warrior, right? And when I was reading the first page, I was like, wait, is this about Hedwig? Hedwig! <laughs> is this oh. a fucking play about Hedwig? <laughs> yeah, and then I remembered what else happened. I was like, oh. That's so sad. Well, I kind of like that little... We talk all the time about how terribly the chapters are named, but I think in this case, it's a little bit... It's suspenseful because we're waiting with bated breath as like everyone comes back to the burrow and like there's so much chaos and there's this confusion at the start of this chapter where Harry and Hagrid have landed and like Hagrid's knocked out and then Mm -hmm. classic Harry he passes out I think yeah Um, he literally does he passes out immediately yeah next thing he knew he was on the couch um (laughs) And so, like, it definitely creates this little bit of, like, added tension of, like, oh, the fallen who warrior. Died. Yeah. Who died? Was it Hedwig? And Maybe you might convince yourself, oh, it's about Hedwig. <laughs> yeah. I would love, wait, if anyone actually genuinely thought that, I would love, I would love to hear how many people thought it was Hedwig. Also, yeah, <laughs> Harry does pass out. I can't wait to watch part movie part one or part two or whatever. Uh, and just, like, or just, like, by count. myself. Yeah, and just fall count. Yep. <laughs> yeah, my favorite game when watching along with you guys, yeah. He falls a lot. So Harry wakes up on the Tonks couch. Ted Tonks says, hello. Hagrid f- is fine. I fixed your ribs. And then Hagrid walks in and, and is like, look at my good ribs. <laughs> and we grew Harry's tooth. Mm. Which is yeah, like a little so callback that's fun. to that one time Hermione had like beaver teeth. Oh my God. Oh, and, she yeah. got, and she got shrunk. Remember, I was just like... I, just thought I thought this funny. part was a callback to when Harry had to regrow all the bones in his arm. I'm oh, sure it's a callback I, to I feel all like of the hor- horrific ways that Harry <laughs> Potter has injured yeah. himself. Mm-hmm. I think that I think you would have to regrow that tooth though, or unless they could find it. <laughs> yeah, they, I think it's. It, I think the line says like his or his missing tooth was regrown or something. Maybe. Re-grown, well, I know so that they have Skelligro, so maybe yeah. Tonks, uh, Ted Tonks just. Dolloped a little bit of that into it's good to have out it on Harry. Hand. <laughs> yeah. So then Andromeda comes in, and then Harry starts shouting at her. He goes, she looks like you! Bellatrix, <laughs> which, which is which so is fucked up and funny. So funny. He's like, hey, it's so funny. Oh, and then it's Bro. even it's even funnier because he's like, oh, you know, she looks different. She's got brown, you know, lighter brown hair, um, like softer brown hair. Like she has like nicer eyes. But then he's like, but she did look at me a little haughtily, which. It's just it's like, yeah, you just yelled at her. Yeah. And then T- Ted Tonks says, um, that's my wife. <laughs> that's my wife. <laughs> Ted Tonks' We're wife guy normal. confirmed. <laughs> he, they, ask, they ask him where Tonks is, but he doesn't know. So it's time to catch the port key to the burrow. And we have to think about how Hedwig died again. Oh. Hagrid's uh, like, where's she at? And Harry's like, people. she got hit. And Hagrid's like, no big deal. I'll buy you another one. I did not know what to get you for your birthday. Because yeah. one of the one of the saddest parts about death is having to tell other people. Mm. And so, like, the, all Haley the people has this mentioned chapter, that on this podcast before. Yeah, all the people who ask Harry in this chapter, "Oh, where's Hedwig?" and he has to be like, "She's dead," or he just doesn't answer. You yeah. have to just start walking up to people, being like, "Hedwig died." Owl died. died. Hedwig died. Owl died. Hello, everyone. Hedwig, can you make an announcement, please? Thank you. He needs a t-shirt that says, I have a dead owl. Yeah. Yeah, Haley said, when we were talking about when Sirius mm-hmm. Black died, Haley said... It was like the said, Dead Dad Club episode. Dead Dad Club. Um, yeah, that's what she said. That the best thing you can do is tell people so they don't have to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, let's f- go think about some more fun stuff. And... <sighs> Uh, they go to the borough. Yeah. It's, the <laughs> Goodbye, energy's Andromeda. bad. It was nice meeting you. <laughs> yeah, we'll she's never, gone forever. Yeah, we'll never really see you again. Okay. That one bit of lore. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, that's it. Hmm. They end up in the yard at the borough, and Molly and Ginny run down to greet them, like, so hard, begging for updates. Mm-hmm. Like, other people are supposed to be back by now, and they're not. Yeah, they're yeah. the third back. Yeah, it's like uh, Arthur and Fred are supposed to be back, and then... Wait, no. Ron and Tonks. Ron and Tonks. And then Arthur and, and Arthur Fred. And Fred. 
they they both miss their port keys, which yeah. is unfortunate. God, can you like just some just like that? Because no. when they land at the burrow, it's like okay, great, we're gonna start reuniting with everyone. It's gonna mm-hmm. be great, and then it's like. What do you mean we're the first ones back? And like, no one's back. Who I is love... the fallen warrior? <laughs> yeah. I love the imagery of like all these port keys that have just mm-hmm. like appeared on their own, but without the people that were supposed to take them. Yeah. It's like very, it's very chilling. Yeah. And like, fuck, I would not want to, be, I would want to be almost anyone else in this situation right now other than Ginny and Molly just fucking waiting. Whose whole yeah. family is involved in this, like, tomfoolery. Yes. Oh my God. So, speaking of the whole family, um, Lupin and George appear first. George is unconscious and bleeding. Let's worry really hard about George. Let's let's wonder if George is alive. Let's George! Is George the fallen warrior? Is he warrior? the fallen warrior? <laughs> <laughs> Who is the fallen warrior? <laughs> Lupin and oh. Harry carry George inside, and then Lupin very aggressively grabs Harry and asks the code question. What, what creature was in the fish tank in the corner of my office... Do you know what? We've talked about this before. My beloved husband, Sean, who's good at so many things, he would be like, what are you talking <laughs> yeah, about? I'd be yeah. dead. I'd be, Lupin would have Avada Kedavra'd me right then and there on the spot. My I would girlfriend been like, is like, how am I supposed to remember? No long-term memory, but like these details. So if we had to have some sort of code word, it was like, what was I wearing on, you know, December 7th, 2021, when we first, mm. you know, Stayed over, yeah, gone. gone. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think like what I would ask Sean <laughs> as the code, like something he really could tell me. Honestly, Tina, I'm really afraid of what ours would be because we have so many conversations, and then uh, like maybe two weeks later, I mention something, and you're like, "What?" And it's like I'm saying I it. Can't to, remember everything. Yeah, yeah, like it's like you're hearing it for the first time. With with my beloved husband Sean, our code question would be any question because Sean takes about 10 seconds of processing time after you ask him a question. Yeah. So it's like, it's like those, are you a robot things where it's like, I, I've, heard that it like- does, I've heard that it doesn't matter what you say. It's just about the speed at which you answer. Yeah, It's just That's, tracking. All Sean. it is, is tracking your mouse movement. And so Wait, really, when you go to like, click the, I am not a robot and you go to check that box, it's just following your mouse movement and you just have to wiggle it and shake it a little bit and then it'll be fine. Wow. Wow, I'm so curious now to know, like, what, ev- yeah, what everyone's little, like, secret code word would be. I would probably ask Sean, like, what is the Hulu password or something? And he probably <laughs> would know that. Yeah. You couldn't ask me that because I'd be like, hang on, let me pull it up on my notes app. No, I know. It's like, I have too many passwords. I honestly don't know. Yeah. And if I was going to ask the two of you, I have, I have no idea either. Christina, I think it might be, like, yeah. which... Uh, which monster did I find sexy during that one uh, recording episode? Was it the Sphinx? Is yeah, see? About? Okay, but you good. would know. We're good. You We're would know. Good. But other people <laughs> would be so, they'd be distracted by just like the plethora of monsters in They'd be distracted mythology by the, the that are question. Available. Yeah, it's actually. <laughs> They're like, why are you asking me this? <laughs> <laughs> um, Mary Clay. Huh. Well, our question would be, <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of so many bad ones right now. <laughs> okay, my okay, Christina. What show did I describe to you for two hours straight on our <laughs> drive home from Stanton? Obviously, Gilmore Girls. <laughs> I was about to, I was about to wonder. I was like, is it Gilmore Girls? <laughs> Gilmore Girls. Oh, um, Mary Clay. <laughs> Where was it that I was bragging to strangers about your podcast? It was at Hades Town. <laughs> it was at Hades Town. <laughs> uh, so embarrassing. So we're good. We're all good. Great. We're all who we you, say you guys we got are. to see. You guys got to see Hades Town. It was yes, on tour. We got to see Hades Town. Yeah. Oh my god, nice. It was too yeah, expensive was... for me to go to in my city. Isn't it good? It's pretty good. I Christina didn't like it as much. I really loved it. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> okay, I'll forgive you. I will say though, it's uh, it's a completely sung through musical, and if you have like any kind of like audio processing, mm-hmm, like, I mm-hmm. mean, like 
like I don't even have like any formal you know diagnosis or issue with that but even I like still need like captions to watch things yeah, yeah. I definitely during um during the with intermission, intermission Mary Mary Clay caught me reading the synopsis because I was like what I do you remember we sat back down and I said Mary Clay did you know that's Hermes and she was and like I was so yes. mad because <laughs> his first song is literally like and I'm Hermes blah blah blah, blah, blah. and I'm like <laughs> I have a oh hard God. time oh my god I'm so oh. jealous I've never seen it live I love it though <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was definitely cool. Let Hades me just say, was I, I, shut up. I'm saying it dilf. at the same time as you. Oh, oh. <laughs> Dilf, really? Was it the actor or was it how they wrote him? Oh, both. both. He was a big daddy. Was he the, was like, he had a voice. big daddy voice. Uh, Ooh. Uh. If you've read, um, if you've read Laura Olympus, it actually has. A, he actually had a pretty similar vibe. I have not just read like Laura a big. Bi- it's a you absolutely. Until. Wait, so you got to go to Of the Eldest Gods and listen to me when I was talking about myth retellings. It's the one mm-hmm, myth mm-hmm. retelling that I won't do. Why? I don't, we don't have to. Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll go listen to the episode. <laughs> anyway. Hey, it's Harry um, Potter. Um, big business daddy. No, we're talking about Hades Town. No, we're now. still? Okay. We're still? <laughs> oh, no, 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 um, no. Just kidding. We have okay, to Okay, hang on. This is this part of the chapter that they repeat multiple times, which is, Hagrid repeatedly trying to get in and out of the door. Oh my god! <laughs> you have to laugh so somehow. Bad. And like, like here's George. Like they're b- bringing him over to the couch, and like he's bleeding. bleeding, and they're like, "Oh my god!" And then in the background is just Hagrid like running into. <laughs> it's like I imagine like, like a, a video dog, game character, a dog with like a stick that's too big to fit in the doorway, oh and just like backing up and like trying different <laughs> angles. Like poor Hagrid. That is you're right though. That is the comedy relief that she wrote into this chapter because otherwise it is kind of hella depressing yeah it is and he's also drinking profusely (laughs) yeah i will say george losing this might be like a i don't know like a harsh thing to say george losing an ear is like not that bad it's not that bad i think that like the point is that we're really worried about george and then sh- the bitch fucking baits and switch us by killing fred later like i think yeah. that, that it's, it's yeah. like i'm gonna put this one in well, danger but i'm gonna take the other one away from you it's definitely also to show that like hey they're getting hurt now like our friends yeah, like yeah. these kids that we've the been chil- following the children for seven, yeah yeah and also like we learn later that it was snape and it was Sectum Sempra. And so we're learning yeah. that Snape That's is fucked. not pulling any punches around these people. And like He could have sent a killing curse. That's true. But I mean the kids have always been getting hurt. Ron got knocked in the head with a giant chest piece. But like not in a way that hasn't been able to be reversed or repaired in some way that's true yeah people do be like dying and it's like this ear this ear is gone it's cursed off you're fucked yeah and i guess it's like oh he like the ear is only a couple centimeters away from the face right like it was a close one centimeters (laughs) the canadian it's fine i still know what a centimeter is yeah (laughs) (laughs) dumb american listeners no i'm kidding we we have them on our tape measures oh really oh that's cute yeah um, <laughs> I use them sometimes. No, I never do. I absolutely never do. Um, but also, the implication is: did so we know it's Snape, and we know it's Sectum Sempra. Did Snape purposely miss, or was he about to like brap, like kill this kid? I think he got the ear on purpose. Uh, no, I think mm-hmm. we learn later that he was aiming for someone else or something else. Oh, mm, I don't remember. Or okay. something. I, don't pu- uh, I think we learn when we're in his POV chapter later on. Oh, God. That, like, <laughs> he goes to shoot a spell at huh. something or someone or to, like, knock someone off, but then something happens and he gets he gets knocked forward and his spell goes flying and, yeah, ch- someone yeah. someone listening to that chapter later on Send me mm-hmm. a message and be like, you okay. were right. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> okay, perfect. Snape was aiming for whatever Death Eater. Um, I'm trying to think of Death Eater name. Uh, Mick, R- uh, McCormick. Rodolfo. Mick, no, um, Mick, not McCormick. It's Mick something. McLean? McClare. McClare? Mick, um, Mick, it's not. Mick but it's like it. Mick. McLovin. McLovin. <laughs> McLovin. <laughs> 
McNair. McNair. You show up to Death Eater orientation. The <laughs> less McLovin. you wear, the more you McNair. <laughs> okay, Anyone? it's McNair. I don't know what that is. is it, what's that jingle for? It's for Nair, the hair removal product oh. that just burns hair off of your body. It does. It really burns. <laughs> don't use it on your bikini line. <laughs> just a PSA. <laughs> I've never done it. What? (laughs) Bitch, come on. And with summer season coming up, you two have a chance (laughs) to get summer body ready. (laughs) Hagrid is trying to fit in the door. Is that what we're talking about? Hagrid, as he's buffooning in and out of the door frame, he also is like, why don't you need to check my identity? And Lupin says, polyjuice wouldn't work on, doesn't work on half giants. So what? And this is scientifically sound. There's a ton of magical research about this. Yeah. Abs- absolutely fact. I'm not even going to check. Nothing else could be afoot here. It's such a random throwaway line. It's very weird. Although, think. I will say, I don't remember this, like, at all. Um, so, I mean, I know the podcast will get there eventually, but I won't, because I'm not going to read it any further. I, <laughs> I, love that. I, love that. Book. I mean, honestly, <laughs> Adele, though, same, because I only read the chapters that I come on for, and so I just yeah, have, like, I, weird... only, I only read the ones I come on for. Oh, I just Tina. have weird jumps where I'm like, yo, that's so crazy. Last time I was on, they were yeah. having a wedding, and now they're camping. How did we get here? The wedding is soon. I did read the last page of the last chapter, but, like, who, how did, how did they find out this whole thing, everyone's like, oh, my God, like, we're, we expected this to go smoothly. Like, how did they know that we were moving him tonight? Who, like, who's the Snape? Snape, Snape like, no, knew somehow. And I, we're not exactly sure I think exactly he was sure just like, hey, how. they're probably going to move him. But, like, isn't this, like, the day of his birthday or, like, the no, day before it's his the day birthday? Before. It's a week before. Oh, okay, never mind. It's a week before. Because <laughs> everyone thought that they were going to move him on his, on his birthday. I know they, they didn't know about the seven Harrys, but... They definitely knew the date. I guess we'll find out in the Snape POV. Okay, well... I I just don't remember. Yeah, once we get there. Here's the thing. Snape's supposed to have this, like, grand redemption. I'm not saying I buy it, because you guys have listened, probably listened to the rest of this podcast. I I obviously don't don't buy buy it. it. (laughs) But, like, but he's supposed to have this grand redemption. But this whole book, he's making choices that put put Harry and other people in extremely real danger. He could have just kept his mouth shut. He could have just kept his mouth shut. And just been like, yeah, sure. If you want me there on the birthday, yeah. I would get it if Voldemort was like, hey, Snape, do you have any ideas of what they might be thinking or doing? He could, (laughs) like, then I guess I would get him being like, it provided, but like, if he was just like, "Hey, I have an idea. Let's go the week before his birthday because that's probably when they're going to move him." Like, you made it yeah. harder for them, Snape. You didn't have to do that. Like, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't. Know. So, okay, future future podcast when this is addressed and like when this is revealed, just make a note just let her know we were were speculating we didn't know i'll make a note because it's like it's like the chapter's trying to be like there's a spy just like there was you know 17 years ago there's a spy and who's it gonna be and then harry deadass looks at hagrid and it's like oh yeah well hagrid once you know gave voldemort like a bit of information for what was it like a an egg the dragon egg it was the egg yeah Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. So it's this whole Lord like Berta. this whole of who, like who's the snitch, who's the spy, and I don't think there's like a satisfying payoff at all. No, definitely this. not. I think they just yeah. come to the conclusion that there wasn't one because they. Well, well let's let's keep going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you know what I think about sometimes? So it talks a lot about how like Snape is like such a good so good at occlumency. Mm. Like the o- like the only rival of Voldemort when it comes to like legitimacy and occlumency is like Snape. Or Bellatrix. Okay, Bellatrix too. Okay, but I imagine them because they're both they're all so good at it and they're all trying to do it on each other. I imagine <laughs> there's a lot of moments where they're just like staring at each other. <laughs> In the library or whatever, like of Malfoy Manor, just like trying to like get in there. That's so funny. Wait, I need fan art of this. <laughs> Someone like the butler walks in and it's just like dead silent, and they're all just like staring at each other. I need fan art of like <laughs> Bellatrix, Narcissa, Snape, 
and Voldemort all like that Spider Man meme. Yes, I was, that's looking. exactly what I yes, was thinking. But instead, they're all yes. looking at each other and they're like really intensely like making eye contact, trying to do like Akumensi. <laughs> <laughs> I need this. Okay. Um, they now we're talking a little bit about what happened. Um, Lupin is coming in hot. He's reprimanding Harry for disarming rather than stunning <laughs> or killing. A, 17, a 16 year old child he's like why aren't you doing murder <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then he's like telling him like don't become known for disarming but mm-hmm. like and i agree but like you could throw a couple of bat bokey hexes in there like you could throw <laughs> some other shenanigans in there yeah. but like you don't if he Ginny doesn't need to there, be doing she murder wouldn't hesitate if Ginny yeah. was there she would not what if hesitate. they just throw out um the the tickling charm <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, they're in the like, middle of this em. giant battle. <laughs> yeah. That's what I want to see. I think that's yeah. so silly. That is it so silly. It doesn't need to be murder. It, it just doesn't always have to be What disarmed? are some other dumbass spells that that are in this series? Like the like um the ch- Tangelo or whatever that makes Neville dance at the end of book 5. Yeah, the dancing. dancing one. Yeah. Oh my god, there's um, a spell like that in Baldur's Gate 3. Otto's ear really? is spell. Yeah. Oh my god, I haven't even found that spell yet. Okay, you need to find Otto's Irresistible Dance. (laughs) That's so funny, I haven't seen that one. Okay, you can buy it at Um, Sorcerer's The Jelly Legs Jinx. Okay. (laughs) Jelly Legs on Stance (laughs) Shunpike. I think, like, I think how are you going to rent a broom with Jelly jelly Legs, though? I bet there's a lot of really fun shenanigan spells. Like, if you could make yep. someone sneeze really hard. Yeah. I would never do this to you, Mary Clay, because you Thank deal you. with it enough. Thank you. But someone else, like my husband, Sean, I would love to make him sneeze really hard for one minute. That's just good old-fashioned <laughs> mm. shenanigans. The tickling charm still is pretty good. Like, And then, yeah, the bat bogey hex, which I think is like bats come and they like hit your face. Yeah, we literally oh, were talking yeah. about that. I think in last week's episode, or I something. thought it's, it was no, no. It, they come out of your nose. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it turned your boogers into bats. Boogers is bats. Which honestly, well, if you don't have any boogers. That they, sounds you, to then me. Then you get some. <laughs> I would love for someone to do the bat bogey hex on me because it sounds like it would just clear out my sinuses. Oh, especially during the height of allergy season. Yeah, mm. just like sweep mm-hmm. everything out of there. You know this what I mean? A real deep clean. Oh my god! Oh my god! I just made a connection. I just made a connection. Do you want to know why it's probably called the bat bogey hex? What do you the say? Bats live in caves. No, but but what do you say to someone when they have yes. like a little booger dangling in your nose oh, and you want to be like, you've got a "Hey, there's a the bat cave. in the cave." <laughs> that was actually pretty genius of of J.K. to do that. No, nope, it's I not her. I that. made the connection. Oh, We're not wow. giving her any credit. <laughs> okay, that's okay, valid. I like that. But also, so for Harry to give to say to do the killing curse, you have to mean it, right? The whole point about the three unforgivable curses is that you have to mean yes, it. Yes, exactly. And so he can't just like look at Stan Chung Pike and be like Avada Kedavra. Like, hey, bitch, blah, blah, blah. what if you so, try to imperio so someone much who's conflicting magic? What if you try to imperio someone who's already being imperioed? Like, could you like over take? I think it the depends on the magic imperio. Yeah. This? Okay, something fun about me is I just read A Court of Th- Thorns and Roses. Is that what it's called? A Court of Thorns uh, and a Roses. A blank of blank and blank. <laughs> <laughs> and there is much battling of magical strength. <laughs> so I think it would be a battle of that strength at that thing? point. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much a sex thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hermione and Kingsley arrive. <laughs> Kingsley checks lupin's identity lupin's mm-hmm. like this is harry he's good we're all being Hang very on. secure yeah can we, we need talk to talk about the pause. dumbledore please can we, we talk need about to the talk dumbledore? about this we need to talk about their question and the yeah. fact yes. that dumbledore get like oh, yeah. harry is standing <laughs> harry is, is standing unhinged. right there yeah. and hears them say that dumbledore is like la- like the last conversation he had with the them two words. was harry is our last hope Trust him with all your heart. And, like, can you just imagine being Harry Potter in that moment? And you're like, Harry Potter, you're my only hope. (laughs) Kingsley Shacklebow. Long ago, you served with my father in the the first wizarding war. I come to you now with whatever. That's great. I'm proud of you, MC, for recognizing it now. 
all of this is a lot of pressure for a kid. But, like, yeah. I just want to do, like, a crash zoom on his face in that moment. Be, and, like, looking to, like, just a moment where he looks at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, what? Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. <laughs> uh, just the, the subtitle from that one episode of Parks and Rec where it goes, Ben Wyatt, human disaster. Like, yeah. Harry Potter. <laughs> That's a pretty uh, accurate reading. Of wizard Carrie in disaster this, <laughs> in, this, in this chapter. Yeah, Harry is the best hope we have. Like, trust him or whatever it is. Yeah, so hard. Oh it's so God. hard to hear. Dumbledore that. Like, couldn't do have not been trust me. Like, really, Dumbledore? That's like Lupin and Kingsley are leaving your office after like a very intense, probably like debrief meeting, and you're like, that's what you end with. Not you what know, if like, it? What if it was like? Oh, hey, can you pick me up another bag of lemon drops? <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, and by the way, Harry's the best hope that we have. You should trust him. <laughs> Bye. And something about lemon drops. I don't remember. That's so funny. Yeah, it would be cool if Dumbledore's last words to them were like actionable advice. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, like, like, hey, like can, you drop this memo- can you drop this memo off at the office or whatever like or i would say something even more <laughs> badass like if you're gonna go down and take as many of those mo- motherfuckers would it Samuel awesome. L. jackson saying motherfuckers with you yeah um we were denied a version of these films where samuel L. jackson was kingsley <laughs> i'm all yeah. over that except I'm for he does he that. doesn't do a british accent everyone else is british except for kingsley <laughs> and it's just samuel yeah, L. Yeah. jackson that reminds and me nobody that, mentions like, it the Muppets, but old, there's only one human. Like Muppets, Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Except the, the only, there's only there's one human, and Samuel it's Samuel Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, what movies, I would watch all of these. If you guys could cast Samuel, like everything stays the same, but then Samuel L. Jackson is in it, like what would he be? I definitely want Lord of the Rings with Samuel L. Jackson as Gandalf. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, That's great. Star Wars, but Samuel L. Jackson has Lord Vader, I think. Ooh, that's fun. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this is hard. We really just covered, like, the big three right now. Harry Potter, Star Wars, <laughs> and Lord of the Rings. We're out of media. I would see this motherfucker in anything. And when we when when we were playing, like, your little Skywalk before you run, like, pre-game, and I, we, were doing, we were doing, like, name that character completely out of context, and I showed... Samuel Jackson. <laughs> and yeah. Mary Clay was like, I don't know who the character Samuel is. Samuel Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> is he in Phantom Menace? I have zero memory. <laughs> no. He's not? Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. No, he is he at is, the he's end. He's in the Jedi oh, Council. Well, when, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, when Qui Gon is talking. Yeah, he be counseling. He I do, guess he do be counseling. <laughs> so, like, if he's on a council. Ooh. <laughs> now I'm just putting him in other fantasy stories, but in Game of Thro- uh, in Game of Thrones is like a, v- a various type, yeah. like a yeah. master of secrets. At oh, the court. I was gonna say Greece, but is that Danny Zuko, John <laughs> Travolta, oh. Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> oh my god, I would see him in anything. Yeah, I, I, I love him. Would- I, I love too. him. Oh, I did want to ask: Why can Voldemort fly now? No, I know because oh. he he can fly. He can fly. He can fly. Magic. <laughs> but that like he make really sense is, to me. He's doing magic, Adele. You wouldn't understand. You're just a muggle. <laughs> I think it's like how Peter Pan flies with pixie dust and happy thoughts. Except for right now, the Wizarding World is like as <laughs> is so depressed, and that's what he's thriving off of. Mm. Interesting. Wait, I oh, Dementors can fly, right? And Dementors have sided with Voldemort. So what if there's one Dementor on either side of him, but like underneath his voluminous him cape? Carrying, <laughs> carrying up, and he's like, this way, this way. And they just kind of like follow him around. Like. Okay, that's very good. That, that is what I think. Now. I think all of these theories are, are, are spot on. Yes. <laughs> just two Dementors with their scrawny he's little like, arms like... <laughs> And they're like, we should have stayed in Azkaban. This was easy. Azkaban was easier than this. It's like carrying like a queen on her (laughs) throne. Do you pronounce it palanquin? Right? That word? Uh, I believe it's pronounced palantir. (laughs) What? (laughs) Oh, never mind. It's a thing from Lord of the Rings. (laughs) Oh, sorry. I got it. (laughs) It's the (laughs) orb that that Pippin looks in. It's when Saruman's like, I'm pondering my orb. I see. I got you. The pal, the palin, palinquin, palinquin, 
Palanquin or palanquin? Anyway, one of those two. It's called a palindrome. (laughs) So uh, Arthur and Fred arrive (laughs) unscathed. Arthur comes screaming through the kitchen, telling people to fuck off about his identity. You know, know that's like the owner of the house walking into his home. That's the energy he's carrying right now. He's like, fuck all the way off. Yeah. (laughs) And they do. So Fred kneels down by George. He's like (laughs) sad and speechless, but George is okay. He makes his little joke about being saint like. Uh, Mm -hmm. He's holy. He kind of gives Fred an earful of puns in this moment. (laughs) LOL. <laughs> MC didn't even deign to give that a reaction. <laughs> uh, wait, but I, I, there aren't really any good ear related humor. If, okay, listener, if you have a good ear related pun, I want to hear it. I think they made mm. all oh, wait. of them in this book. I just made one. By asking, saying that I wanted to. You want to hear, hear it. it? Yeah. That wasn't wow. at some point. He. At some point, he goes, here, here, right? Like, I think those yeah. are all the ear-related puns I yeah. could make. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. whole. It's a, whole. It's a lot of them. Or lobe. related puns. With lobe. Someone better get um, Sigourney Weaver and Shia LaBeouf in here, because there's a hole. Wow. Digging on, uh, oh, oh, I'm guess digging. I think that's our cue to move on. Um, <laughs> so people go out into the yard to hey, wait. Hey, what kind they- of milk is, does George prefer? Whole, whole milk. No, actually 2%. Uh, <laughs> are Harry and Jenny holding hands? They, are. Correctly? they did start holding hands. Hey, yeah. where does George go grocery shopping? Whole Foods. <laughs> Actually, no food line. Oh, you can't, can't do that twice. Of the joke. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Yeah, so they're holding hands. He hasn't broken up with her, right? He has. No, they have definitely. Oh, they have. And oh. Ra- Ron's about it in the next like three to four chapters. Ron's about to come at him for messing her around. I think that's a direct quote. Yeah. He's following his heart. Sometimes you just gotta hold hands. Yeah. yeah. We still don't know who the fallen, fallen warrior is. <laughs> In this moment, they're also, like, they're still, like, good, close friends. And, like, this is yeah. a deeply, like, traumatic, serious, scary situation. So, like, they're just comforting sure. each other in this moment, yeah. you know? It's yeah. not necessarily about, like, oh, let's be romantic, like, you know, oh, let's be boyfriend, girlfriend again or something. Like, yeah. they're just, it only, you know. It, it only feels like it's romantic because Harry has always just been literally so paralyzed to take one emotional step in any direction mm-hmm. outside mm-hmm. of like relationships being kind of yeah, like it upon says him. at some point that he thought about hugging jenny and then didn't but it's like you can hu- like it. you guys just survived yeah. this battle like you can hug people yeah. that's okay people are weird people are weird and wait it, this is when we finally find out who the well, fallen warrior is well, first, Tonks and Ron come back. Oh, yeah, I forgot about them. Whoops. <laughs> We're not even at I the forgot. Fallen Warrior yet. I forgot about Ron. <laughs> She's so excited. It's okay, they always do. Um, they were only delayed slightly. They missed their Porky, and they had to contend with Auntie, Auntie Muriel. Mur- <laughs> What's more dangerous, <laughs> Death Eaters or Auntie Muriel? <laughs> I want this chapter from the point of view of Aunt Muriel's house. <laughs> yeah. Like, Me too, for sure. I just want to, yeah, I just want to see the moment when they landed. She was probably like, oh, you're trekking in all this mud into my sunroom. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So then Kingsley has to leave, which nobody likes because, you know, he's He's a common presence. He's the best. Um, But then Fleur, Bill and Fleur arrive. And then we get the fallen warrior. Warrior. Who, Who is it, Adele? It's it's Harry and Ginny's relationship. <laughs> it's no. Hedwig. It's Wait, Hedwig. did anyone at any point think that the fallen warrior was George's ear? <gasps> oh. oh, it was here, but now it's not. <laughs> um, it's Mad Eye Moody. It is Mad Eye Moody. So many fallen mo- things. Uh, yeah. An owl, an ear, a friend. Yeah, not Stan Shunbike. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not Stan Shumpert. No. That's sad. Mundung is basically, like, disapparated right away, mm-hmm. which, 
you know Matt, I was like, you're coming with me and you're going to be my fucking responsibility, I guess. <laughs> I see. I don't understand why they ever thought that Mundungus would sit on a broom I know. and see this through. Yeah, yeah, especially now. It seemed like the only person he was ever beholden to even a little bit was Dumbledore. And now Dumbledore's gone and I f- they're just like losing grip on like, him. Like they couldn't have just gotten someone else to be a fake Harry. Like, I, like genuinely. Yeah, what's Molly doing? Why doesn't she come... Well, I don't think we need to have the entire family on these brooms. And then it's just Wait. Jenny at home yeah. waiting. <laughs> yeah. But like, who okay. are, like, Name another person. I bet there is one. Charlie. Ne- Neville? Where's Charlie during all this, by the way? Charlie, we need you, buddy. Where's Charlie? Okay, so we can yeah. do Charlie. We could do um, Perkins. <laughs> Our Perkins. Co-worker. Actually, yeah, you're right. The order is pretty small. Yeah, like where's um, Neville? Where are the Dickeries? That's, the Dickeries. Yeah, yeah Neville. No, Neville the Dickeries. Do we don't need to involve them. They already. They yeah. Like, Cedric already died. I'm only thinking about them because they live near the Weasleys, mm-hmm. so it's oh, like they can carp. They Cedric can carpool have a brother to helping that they can sacrifice no. to the cause. No way. He was a golden boy. That was an old. <laughs> only he had child. Only child, only child written child. all over yeah. him. <laughs> that that's a good point though. Like, who else would they have? Do we know any other ors? Wait, yeah, no. Fuck. There's other ors in Order of the Phoenix. What are they doing? Who pick up Harry? Um, there's that like Matilda. Stompkins lady? Is that a person? Hold on. <laughs> no way. Matilda <laughs> Stompkins. There's Matilda <laughs> like Hopkins, I think. Hopkins. Oh yeah, but she's but she's at she's the ministry. Like, um, mag- yeah, she's at the ministry. She does like law enforcement. I think the she's the only, one with all Harry's letters come from. I think the orders that rescue Harry in Order of Phoenix are Mad Eye Tonks, maybe Kingsley, and Lupin, I think. I don't know. No, like there's, it's there's, like, people- a couple Hold on, there's a couple more. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm going crazy here. Oh, Daedalus Diggle, where's my homeboy Daedalus? He could have done oh, that. De- Daedalus Diggle and Hestia Jones yes. actually are with. They're with the Dursleys right now. Oh fuck! So that's okay. Well, that's it. That's all the people we know. <laughs> that's all, all the Those are all the people. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's all we have. Yeah. Um. Oh, Emmeline Vance. She showed up. And Alphias Dodge. Okay. What oh, about right. McGonagall? No. Do- Dodge is very... Where the fuck is McGonagall? You're completely right. Or Slughorn. Yeah. Like, I feel like both of them oh, would have been As if Slughorn super, would have gone As if this? Slughorn. No. Slughorn, Slughorn only travels by carriage. Yeah. <laughs> no. My but I feel like they in? easily no. could have guilted Slughorn into doing it. They could have been like, hey, you told Dumbledore, Dumbledore about the have. Horcruxes. <laughs> yeah. McGonagall needs to... Although, like, they probably... I, I really... My gut was the same that McGonagall really should be here, but, like... If they're looking at this practically, like McGonagall really has to stay at Hogwarts at and this so does, point and so does to, Slughorn. to protect the kids. Yeah, so yeah. it's like we can't really risk her. Like she has a pretty important job. But I'm sure one of the other two Aurors, there's somebody. We, yeah, could have Emily done this. Emmeline Vance. Yeah, <laughs> where yeah. Are where, you? where are you, Emmeline? <laughs> we don't know anything about you. Yeah. Uh, or like, why couldn't it have been six? Six people, like six. I know. Why did it need to be seven? Magic symbolism. Magic symbolism. Is it seven? Like the Chinese number for death? Is it? I don't know that. Mm. Whoa! But it is like magically strong in well, the kind of get, witchcraft that. Let's not get seven. Let's, let's <laughs> not get started on seven for this novel. Are you sure you want to get there this early, Christina? <laughs> But, like, I think that J.K. was like, this is dramatic. The seven potters. Yeah. The six, the six what potters the doesn't six have a ring to it. <laughs> Yeah. The seven potters. The six potters. Okay. Okay. I think they were well, like, the more potters we can have, the better. The because better. it'll be the more chaotic. <laughs> All of this to say that, like, I, I don't blame Mundungus for fleeing. And I never expected, like, this would never be a situation. Like, this is not his. I don't know. I just, I read that and I was like, well... Of course he did. Like at the first sign of trouble, yeah. he'd run. Like of course, obviously. Like, I just thought that would be obvious to Mad Eye. Yeah. So. Like, wouldn't maybe even just like a fake Harry be better? Like a complete dummy. <laughs> like literally, That's like kind of smart. Like a crash a test cardboard dummy cut out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong. So, or like an illusion of Harry. Oh yeah. Why not that? Or an aura disguised as Harry with the illusion. Oh, so many options. So everyone goes back inside. They're all very sad. Poign- poignantly sad is the 
that is the main activity we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Bill passes around some fire whiskey, and they all toast to Mad Eye Moody, whom we hardly knew because that that wasn't him that whole time. Remember? Ooh. Oh fuck yeah! So we only know him from book five, like just in, in from, passing like, the last couple of books. Yeah. 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 Although it does note that Tonks is really sad and is like crying into a handkerchief and it says like, oh, she was Mad Eye's favorite and like his protege at the ministry. So I thought that was kind of sad. Yeah, that is sad. Yeah, that's hard. Wish we'd gotten to see any of that, but whatever. Know, but no, we'll, ne- no, we'll never, we'll never. Get- and you know what? She'll be dead by the end of the book, too. So does it really matter? Yeah, it God matter. damn. God damn. Does it really? <laughs> and like, it's definitely a moment of like, damn, anyone can die. Mad Eye just died. And like yeah, he was, for sure. he was like a brutal wizard. He was insane, and he was taken. Yeah. Down. What yeah. I was curious about, though, so Bill, so they're like sad, right? They're talking about it. Um, they talked about the whole like, who's the snitch? Like, who is it? Snitches better get stitches. You know, Mundungus. Like, blah blah blah. Actually, the and snitch then- gets you fifty, a hundred and fifty points. <laughs> <laughs> if I. <laughs> Uh, oh my god i did set myself up for that one accidentally but um there they like lupin and bill go to get mad eye's body and we know yeah so i was confused at this so they leave and they're like we gotta go like we gotta go get his body is it because of like the secrets like some sort of like dark magic that his body could tell about like his memories or something like no i think it's like a nobility thing or is it just a nobility thing i think it's a gryffindor nobility thing they're like we gotta go get his body i think they don't want the death i think they just don't want the death eaters to find him just because like you don't want your friend to be in the hands of like the enemy that killed you yeah because i was thinking i was like thinking like what kind of dark magic they could do Maybe, maybe with Mad Eye's b- b- body, like there's that mm. you know, like a resurrection spell of like forcing to see to talk the secrets, or you know, we like we have um, memories that are able to come out. Like, does the person have to be alive to do that kind of thing? Because I was curious because yeah. we don't know how this goes. I don't think or like well, maybe- when when Snape is dying, he like cries out his. Oh, don't fine, but mm. in, I think in the book actually he just takes it out of his brain like he a normal does. person. Yeah, instead of that I wonder, stupid. We don't know if tear. you can do that. Um, post pu- push posthumously. Posthumous, yeah, posthumous? Like how do you, you say that word? Posthumously. Posthumously. If you turn you. someone into an in- fairy, can you take their memories? Like wow. what kind of, like what kind of stuff wow. can kind of wizard do with a dead body is what I was I thinking know. about. God. I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate and there's a lot of like there's <laughs> that necromancy spell, right? But I was yeah. like seriously, is that why they're so worried cuz like I get That's it. why I need to be burned the second I die. <laughs> cuz she was like don't Same. any of you fucking touch my memories. <laughs> don't. Yeah, and, don't but, make me a zombie like don't. But we know that somebody else finds his body first. So, oh yeah, because they don't find him, right? And because his oh, eye that's shows right. up they later, take the right? eye in the ministry. Fuck. Yeah, I totally oh, forgot. Yeah, shit. so I was I remember that when I was reading, cursed by the. Oh I mean, god! I and then Harry's dumb. Book <laughs> Harry's so dumb because he takes the eye, and then they're like, "How do they know we're here?" And it's like. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe yeah. the only person that would know this is a significant thing. Yeah, like so, it's got like whatever. When when you guys do eventually get to that episode, you can talk about all about like how did the ministry get Moody's eye? But I am like, I'm like, like I'm just, I, I hate to be this person, but if we had just survived like a like a, a horrible horrible attack and like things are really not safe and there's only like these pockets of safety, like I don't know if I would go back for somebody's body unless I was like, oh, the body could like tell some secrets or something like. What if, especially if there were like Death Eaters, you know, there, like we'd have to have another yeah. fight and stuff. Like, I don't know if I would do that. I think I'd probably just be like, oh man, like, like this is horrible. This is awful. But like, it's, it's, it's not worth the risk unless there's the worry that like, I don't know, are there memories that can be stored in Moody's eye? Cause we know it has magical properties. Like, I don't, yeah, I just. A lot of questions and we don't get to learn anything. Yeah. Well, she could have made the book longer and told us, but I don't think oh, any of us. I don't think any of us I want that. I feel like that. she tells us dumb stuff and then doesn't tell us stuff that I'm curious about. Like reminding us that Hagrid is a half giant. Oh. Uh, yeah. Let us not miss the part where they're like, "Who here betrayed us?" And Harry's like, "We're not going to blame anyone. I trust all of you. We probably weren't even betrayed. This was probably a coincidence." And everyone's like, "Okay, Harry." Oh, it's not believable at all, but okay. 
I think maybe Lupin, I forget who is like, you're just like James. Or, Lupin. It's Lupin. Yeah, obviously. It's just. And Harry great. does the thing where he's like, thanks. And Lupin's like, I didn't mean that yeah. as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, not to talk about like James Potter and the whole like secret keeper thing, but like James did kind of make a a bad choice there switching over. And so Harry being yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Harry being like, Oh, thanks. It's kind of like, oh, Harry, you're kind of making a bad choice by not critically examining, like, how did this leak out? Yeah. 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 Like, we just talked about how few allies Harry has. Like, we could barely name any Aurors who were, like, on his side. <laughs> his school children, yeah, why friend, like, the professors. More people? And so it's like, that circle is so small, so who could have betrayed him? And just for the explanation of that, it was like a lucky guess from Snape. I'm like, oh, girl, really? Like, this payoff is not. Yeah. It's not paying off. In my mind, it was Fleur all along. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you imagine? Damn. <laughs> Good for her. If she had been imperious <laughs> from the start. She was like a sleeper agent. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so Harry's like, I need to go with you to get Mad-Eye's body too i need to protect you but no, like that's not literally i don't think that's what happens i think he is just like i need to get out of here to mm-hmm. not d- to not draw attention here anymore oh, okay yeah, to not bring danger upon everyone else it's his whole like hero thing thank you i misread my own notes yeah. because i was not paying enough attention when i read the chapter okay no one <laughs> i paid unfortunately i paid far too much attention okay so here he's like i need to fuck off to protect you yeah and they're all like, that would be so dumb because literally the whole point of us doing this yeah. is to get you here to be safe. And also, and if he would you were to leave now, like, <laughs> alone. that's just the dumbest thing you could ever do in your life. Well, I have a question, though, because everyone seems, like, really convinced that Voldemort has no clue where Harry is right now. But, like, oh my God. doesn't he? Doesn't the, he? The borough yeah. would be like number one place I would look for Harry Potter. It's just the only place that he yeah. could be right like, now. Like he's bit he goes to the borough what like what, I don't know, four out of seven books basically. Yeah, like pretty every much. summer or for uh Christmas or something. You know, like Yeah. He would obviously it's be the at only the place. Yeah. What's also interesting is like there's this there's this good line I think that says when they're talking about like the wand acting on its own and like the golden flames oh, are that happened that. in the in the ch- yeah. last chapter Harry has like has this um, line where he's he it's like he hates that everyone's looking at him as if he possesses like this some sort of awesome power that Voldemort also does like this power to and he's he's trying to say that, like it's my wand it's never done that before yeah yeah cuz they keep trying to be like oh well you know in times of stress and like adrenaline like you really mm-hmm. discover what you're capable of and he's like it like wasn't magic like and that <laughs> yeah and they're not and no one's listening to him and no one's hearing them and he's like oh my god like they think i have some sort of like like innate like secret like literally secret magical powers that can match Voldemort and we know that, like, we, with as readers with hindsight, know that there is, like, something secret and hidden and magical about Harry, but... The love magic? No, oh, the horcrux. I thought it was the horcrux, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm so over... Okay, okay. Listen, Tina, I'm so over the love magic. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's just interesting how he's, like, like, no one's listening to him, where he's, like, it wasn't me, like, it was the wand, like, the... Because we know... Th- this is because of the twin, uh, the twin cores, right? Is that what no, it is? No, because no, is because Voldemort thing? literally wasn't even using. He was using his Malfoy's fucking, wand. He was using Lucius Malfoy's wand. So I think so in this it, case then? it was it was the connection that Voldemort and Harry share because of the Horcrux thing. So yeah. so they're right. It is some sort of secret magical connection, like power that Harry has, but just not in the way that he thinks. Yeah. So a little bit of a foreshadowing. Okay. Yeah, it's like they think that there's some power, and it's like not quite a power yet. It's a power, but it's like a dormant power. It's yeah. not like Harry can just like switch it on or off. So Molly asks where Hedwig is. Cool. Stop asking about her. Why she did we, why did we transport her this way? Molly Weasley, why don't you already know where Hedwig is? The sad thing is that I can see exactly what was happening in this situation where like things are tense, Mad Eye's dead, like a bunch yeah. of people just left and they're like, Okay, what do we do now? And she's looking for like actionable mm-hmm. items and, and she's, she's trying like, to help. She's oh, like, Oh, I'll let feed me her. Yeah. Oh, where's Hedwig? We'll put her in the barn with Errol or whatever. Like, you know, and 
she's trying to like move into like okay let's get everyone settled Mm -hmm. it's just so crazy that they traveled Hedwig why didn't he way? just let Hedwig go and then go like okay go to the borough like like three days before or something was he worried she'd be tracked or something like they were worried that he that she would give him away like she doesn't understand perfect English <laughs> I know she was and able to like, find serious in, like, and the she can do anything like so, like there's so many options other than bringing her in a cage he imprisoned her in a, a tiny cage and completely prevented her from protecting herself or escaping at all yeah and then was like sit next to me the target in the movie he releases her and then she still gets killed so i fuck the movie am i crazy or do they in the movie all have little cages with stuffed faked owls yeah they do and in the books too no i think that's just in the book that they have the fake Hedwigs. I don't think they have that in the movie. Oh, because so, oh. wait, it's a movie memory that he really that he has Hedwig, and that's how they know it's Harry. But it's a, in the book they know it's Harry because he disarms Stan. Yes. Oh my god! This whole time I've been You're correct. Oh, the movie, the movie is getting to me. God. Anyways, just let yeah. Hedwig go. Because in the let movie she comes yeah, back and she like options. flies near Harry to try and like yeah. protect him. And then uh, a spell hits her. Yeah, and then, and then that's how they really know that that was the. That's how they know that he was the real Harry, because Hedwig mm. came back to find to find him. Fuck, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. They're talking about the wand. Blah blah blah. Harry goes outside. He's thinking he about Zombletorn. His score hoards him. It really he hoards. Goes, it really hoards, and he goes into a vision. And in the vision, Voldemort is abusing Ollivander in rage because apparently Ollivander is the one who told Voldemort to try using a different wand Mm -hmm. and that didn't work. Yeah, because it's not the priori incantatum this time around. It's the Horcrux being like, no. Mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm, Yeah. So Hermione and Ron come to get Harry. He like tells them what he saw. And Hermione is really scared and angry at him for, like, continuing to let these visions happen. What do you guys make of that? Honestly, I would have punched a bitch. (laughs) Her or Hermione? At this point, yeah. Because, like, he... We've established multiple times that, like, occlumency is something that, like, is very hard to learn if you apparently, like, don't have, like, some kind of, like, certain characteristic within yourself. Mm -hmm. And Harry clearly doesn't have that. And he was never given (laughs) any good opportunity to practice legilimens or legilimens. Yeah. Yeah. And then meanwhile, I still think like even if he was super, super skilled at that and knew what he was doing at this point, like it's such a it's a connection that like no one has ever dealt with. And it's so much stronger and power, more powerful than anything else. So, like, I feel like even, le- you know, legitimacy or occlumency or whatever wouldn't work in this situation. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. At this point, I, I was kind of like, really? Like, let, yes, let's give Harry, like, more shit to worry about right now. Like, I know it's how she cares. It's like her. She's anxious. She's trying to control something, right? Like, she's feeling like everything's spired out of, out of control. And so she's trying to control this one aspect, being like, Harry, like, you need to do this, right? This is like an action item that she can do. Yeah. But it's like, he's been through enough in this chapter. Like, just be like, wow, that His vision owl sounds just really died. scary. Yeah. <laughs> Fallen warrior head wake. But just be like, wow, <laughs> that's really scary. I wonder what this vision could mean. But like, in the meantime, like, we, like, we can talk about this tomorrow. Like, we need to go to bed Mm -hmm. yeah so i understand where she's coming from but also at the same time like i think it's kind of helpful for them to have these like little pieces of intel you know i mean helpful for the narrative yeah well it's helpful for the narrative and like it's helpful for them to be like okay here's what's going on on that side yeah Mm -hmm. i wonder if it's supposed to be like some kind of moral statement about harry that he, like, can't keep his thoughts and his feelings secret. He's, like, open to love. <laughs> you feel me? That's why he's bad at I think I, I know I was on for some occlumency chapter in the past. And I'm Probably sure I five. said... I'm sure I said some theory about... Not even a theory, just that, like... 
Harry be dumb. He is so, like, head so empty. And so, like, how do you, like, his head (laughs) is not a steel trap. And so, like, it would make sense. (laughs) It would make sense that he is terrible at this kind of stuff. Yeah, Yeah. teenage boy really do be, like, head empty, no thoughts, just Quidditch. (laughs) Girls and the sense of impeach. Bird. Except for bird now girl. he has one le- now he has Sport. one less yeah. thought. <laughs> Sports girl bird mm. Voldemort. Voldemort. Yeah, Voldemort. that's probably it. And now all he he what doesn't about- have sport and he doesn't have bird, so now it's just girl, kind of, and Voldemort. Oof. <laughs> that's the end of the chapter. Adele, are there any final thoughts or favorite moments or special shout outs you wanna bring to our attention um i'm just glad we got to spend some time with <laughs> andromeda talks for like five <laughs> seconds it's just like great yeah. another character who is not like a teenager who is an adult that has their own life in this world mm-hmm. for as briefly as we're able to see them like we so infrequently see like what does the wizarding world like actually look like right like not just the shopkeepers yeah. but like what do regular people in the wizarding world lo- look like Plus, she has that added backstory of, you know, she's related to these characters that we've spent a lot of time with, we know really intimately. Um, Mm -hmm. And yet she doesn't have that story of her own, really. Like, we know so much about Narcissa Malfoy. We know so much about Bellatrix the Strange. We have long moments with both of them. And, you know, Mm -hmm. she's like the third sister. She's the middle sister. She's not, you know, really mentioned. But yeah, they're just all, all three of them are fascinating to me. Yeah. So I'm just glad we got to spend some time time with her. Hell Yeah. Mary Clay, any final words about the chapter? Nah. Bird. <laughs> okay. That's, the fallen that's warrior. completely fair. <laughs> Maybe the real fallen warrior was the friends we made along the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that's pretty good. Um, my final thoughts about the chapter were, this is really sad. There's a reason that I don't read this book just for shits and giggles. Every chapter just kind of no, bums me no out. No giggles, me out. all shits. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I hope everyone gets well soon from this plot. I don't know. Will it get better from here? Mm -hmm. No. No. (laughs) No. No. Well, let's move on to plugs. Adele, where can the people find you on the internet? Should you wish to be found at this time? Um, I'm back in the Discord server after a long woo, hiatus. Woo. Hi- hiatus. Yeah, hiatus. <laughs> um, pretty active in a lot of the channels. Uh, like The, my the book ca- club as well. The book club, because I've been reading a lot more of the My Cabbages, because my partner are, and I are doing an Avatar watch. Mm-hmm. She's never seen it for the first time. Skywalk Before You Run, because I am unhealthily obsessed with Star Wars. Uh, what else? Oh, burn before reading because I've started writing again. So that's probably oh, the best yeah. place to write to, to find me. Um, Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Find hell me yeah. there. Cool. And what's something you've been watching or playing or listening to or reading or thinking about lately? You think the listeners would enjoy? Yeah. Well, aside from shitty Harry Potter DVD games, which I'm definitely <laughs> gonna send you now. I need to do this. Um, I watched Renegade Nell on Disney Plus. I posted about this in the Discord. It was so good. So I really like historical, uh, like period dramas, and I also like fantasy. And this was these two things married together. And nice. if you're a fan of Dairy Girls, you're gonna love this. It's the character of Orla, or like the actress who plays Orla. Um, it's got some whimsy. It's got some. If it was the character of Orla doing all this, that would be so insane. Oh my god! Oh my god! The show also feels just very queer, just in a way of just like just like subverting a lot of gender norms and such. Um, A couple of the actors and actresses are queer as well, which is kind of cool. I'm really hoping that there's going to be second season. Um, The music is great. Yeah, it's been a while since I've watched a show from start to finish, and just like thoroughly, it found myself just like just like transfix and just like it was like a romp of a good time basically nice Nice. i love that that's a great recommendation Mm -hmm. mary clay where can the people find you on the internet you can listen to my star wars podcast skywalk before you run uh wherever you get podcasts new episodes every tuesday um and then i will plug my twitch channel because i have gotten i have acquired the technology um (laughs) and uh i am now able to stream to twitch 
from my Switch, which means I can play games that I actually like. Not that I wasn't <laughs> nice. like, but like I I have a I have a MacBook, so I'm very limited in the mm-hmm. computer games, like the video games mm-hmm. that I can play on that. Um, and so anyway, I got like the setup and I figured out the technology to stream. Proud of you. And I have been playing Zelda and obviously I love Zelda. This is probably the fifth billionth time I've plugged just the general concept of Zelda on this podcast. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it's been fun. Um, I would say like most Tuesdays around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. um, Come hang out. Twitch.tv slash MC WhatsApp. Just wait till you get to the Star Wars games. (laughs) It's a lot. Yeah, there are a lot. I have a couple on my N64. There's some good ones. Yeah. Um, Mary Clay, what are you plug- plugging this week? That's what Did I plugged. That was my plug. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which? <laughs> Halfway through my question, I was like, wait, what? My name's Christina. You know where to find me. What? What have I been reading? Hold on. I forgot. I forgot to pull it up ahead of time. Akotar. Been- yeah. Akotar. I did read A Court of Thorns and Roses by, what is her name? Sarah J. Moss. Sarah J. Moss. Thank you. Um, that was very fun if you like flirty fantasy. I had a great time. And that's it, actually, since last time I recorded but because I, re- I read the three body problem, which I frankly can't really recommend. <laughs> you should watch the show. <laughs> oh, I haven't started it for book club this month yet. So I know yeah. I shouldn't be te- I shouldn't be telling people that. Yeah, Maybe PSA, I'll say join, join our book club. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Fun. join our book club. We read a lot of cool, interesting stuff. I love it because it makes me read stuff that I wouldn't normally read. Yeah, mm-hmm. same. And w- we get to nerd about it together. And we also just get to share like like half of my book recommendations I've gotten from Alex in that server. Yeah. So literally it's just ten out of ten from you. there. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. It's fun. It's awesome. a good time. You should join. Well Adele, thank you so much for joining us for this wonderful episode of the restricted section. Well thank you so much for having me. It's always such a blast. And I can't believe we're here that yeah, we started with book three having me on. It just feels like and like I don't know, we're here on the final book and I know. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm just so and, glad to be here. Yeah, hell yeah. And you'll, <laughs> I feel like the vibe's weird because we don't, you're probably coming back, but only if we can make the schedules work yeah. for and if our not, movie episode later this season. If not, I'm sure I can weasel my way into something. I'm Maybe sure you it's probably a can. Harry Potter DVD game. <laughs> or <laughs> our favorite game, Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. Oh my god. <laughs> I I'm excited to read those fanfics. Okay. Um Mary Clay, are you aware that oh. I've I've never ever had a good outro to this podcast? Yeah, I'm aware. Are you aware that I finally have a good outro this season? Oh no, what is it? You started it. Do you know what it is? Is it um is it a uh, well, before we can uh kill our owls? We got a deathly That's before so we can hollow. That's really bad. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go kill Voldemort. Woo! Oh, wait, I didn't. Hang one. on, hang on. No, I need to PSA that that I didn't come up with that. A very popular musical thinks you came, came up, up with that. Nobody thinks mm. you came up with it, but you just said it at the end of like episode one or two of this season. I say it so, so many times because because Star Kid lives in my head rent free. <laughs> And, and your heart. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you that it served a purpose. Let's go yeah. kill Voldemort! I, I do, do miss it. Get Out of My House. <laughs> that one was a weird vibe. Get out of my... That's how you have to end the last episode. Yeah. That'll be cute. <laughs> That's the end of the episode. Let's go kill Voldemort. Let's do it. But not owls. That's it, potheads. Thanks for listening to The Restricted Section. Hosted and produced by me, Christina Kahn. The music produced by Ryan Kahn. Logo designed by Michael Hardison. Please don't find us on social media. I am not doing anything there. However, you are welcome to join our Patreon. For a dollar a month, you can gain access to our Discord server, which is a lot of fun. And for $5 a month, you get access to our monthly bonus episodes. There's also a $10 and a $20 tier as well. So please go check that out. We are honored to be part of Deus Ex Media Podcast Network, which features lots of wonderful podcasts for nerds, including this one.
On my first podcast, That's What I'm Tolkien About, I experienced the world of J.R.R. Tolkien for the first time. Now, I'm turning my attention to a galaxy far, far away. My name is Mary Clay, and I am embarking on my first ever journey through the world of Star Wars. Join me each Tuesday as I drive deeper into hyperspace and discover what this vast universe has to offer. My guests will become like Obi-Wan Kenobi as they guide me through this adventure. The sequel trilogy is good information to have because I didn't know what to refer to those movies as. There's a sequel trilogy and then there are two spinoff movies that have come out in the last like 10 years. Okay, so very similar to Shrek. Uh, Shrek had the original trilogy and then it had some spinoffs with Puss in Boots. Yeah, exactly. Exactly like like that. (laughs) Listen to Skywalk Before You Run every Tuesday wherever podcasts are found. Let's synchronize our audio. I'm going to count to five. Please join me for four and five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I clapped. Bitch. We both messed up. I'm so sorry to tell you that I was still reading the the website of these dolls. Get out of here. Okay. Okay, I'm picking it up. This is so fascinating. Okay. Okay. One, two, three. Four, five. five. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. Now I can go back to my Canadian girl content. Canadian girl. No, please don't. <laughs> Dave X Media.